Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. But whatever you do, don't spend it with a yandere. For those of you who don't know what a yandere is, a yandere is a person, usually female, romantically obsessed with someone to the point of using violent means to get them in their arms. They're often seen with a sharp weapon and a psychotic grin. Many yandere's have appeared in many animes in several video games, but there have been several yandere stories that have occurred in real life, and these events are terrifying. Real Life Yandere, submitted by Yandere Chick 29 I used to know this girl, Aya, we'll call her. She was straight out obsessed with this guy. Never mind she was only 11 at the time, she used to be normal, even cute. Then she started having feelings for this guy, they both liked each other. Aya had family issues so I guess she felt flattered that a guy actually liked her. I promise this is 100% real and I'm not making any of this up. After a couple of months, she started stalking him constantly, always having her eye on him in class, stalking him to his house. At lunch, she would sit there and stare. She would go up to him and confess how much she loved him. She would also say creepy things to him such as, I need you. You love me. If you left me, I'd kill you. If any other girl touches you, I'll kill them, etc. The guy liked her too, at least in the beginning. And if she just hadn't stalked him and said creepy stuff, I'm fairly sure they would be together today. This happened for almost a year. Throughout that time, she was paying people to steal items from his house including his underwear. She was 11. She had jackets of him, his school hat, underwear. She even stole a picture of him off the school's Facebook page. She was convinced they were together. No matter how many times he would scream at her to leave her alone, she wouldn't. Or she'd just say, okay, bye baby, love you, then come back two minutes later. Sure, that was scary enough, but if her friend hadn't been there a particular day, a whole lot of blood would have been splattered. You see, the boy she had a crush on, Nathan, we'll call him, told her that she had a crush on another girl, Kay, we'll call her. I don't know if he really liked Kay or not, or was just saying that. Anyways, this drove Aya insane. I know this sounds crazy, but please believe me, this is true, but I just got done from the restroom as I head over to the conversation. I saw Aya with a knife in her hands, only a day after Nathan had told her that he liked Kay. Aya's eyes seemed to have completely blanked the life in it and just disappeared from her eyes. It was after school and most of the kids have left. I know Kay stays after school. But could she really lost her mind that much to the point where she could actually kill someone? Call me a coward, but I wasn't going to stick around to see what would happen uh, if one of Aya's friends would come. Aya, what's that? Her friend said in shock. Aya turned around and some life came back into her eyes. I don't know. She tripped on a rock, but she fell onto the ground with the knife still in her hands. It wasn't a butter knife either. One stab with that knife could have easily killed you. Nathan, Kay, Crush, I love Nathan, mine, Aya explained in the most craziest tone. I left after that. All I know is that they aren't at the same school anymore, and I think she got over him. For all I know, she killed herself, killed someone, stalking someone new, or maybe she's happy and completely normal again. X was Yandere, real story, submitted by H. Keith C. I've got a story that occurred when I was really young, and probably not as severe as some of the stories you have seen on here. Let me know if you think this belongs in a different subreddit, by the way. Anyway, I was in the 6th grade, so I was 12 years old. I dated around a lot. My parents never told me I wasn't allowed to date or anything. Actually, my family would even ask the preschool kids if they have girlfriends yet. Well, this year I was single for the first start of 6th grade, and then she showed up. Let's call her Lexi. Lexi was from a broken home. She lived with a really overweight mother who worked as a nurse at night and during the day she laid in bed like a puddle and forced Lexi to constantly make her food or have food ready for her and set it up so she could eat it from her bed in front of her TV. Well, we always went to her house because between the feedings and her mother's naps, we could screw around without fear of being caught. We were cleaning the house one day after school because her mother couldn't and threatened to punish Lexi if she couldn't do some of the cleaning. Not sure what she could punish her with. Well, Lexi tossed me a broom, 
but it bounced off the concrete floor and racked me in the balls. Not too hard, but enough to make me kneel down. Now a bit of background. I have a ball busting fetish. For those of you who don't know that many kinks, that is where a man gets pleasure from getting hit in the testicles. Well, it didn't bother me too much because of that and Lexi thought it was hilarious. We kind of laughed it off and she apologized and we got back to cleaning. Now Lexi didn't want to lose her virginity, this young, but she loved to suck my cock. She tried it once when we were completely alone and something clicked where she always wanted to get it out. She would eye my dick like it was the sweetest treat she ever had. Sorry if the age thing bothers you. When I think back to the story, I envision myself and her as adults, so it's not that repulsive for that reason. Kids will be kids. Well, I was lying back on her bed one day while she was down there and I heard her whale lord of a mother meandering around her bedroom. It surprised me because she never gets up without Lexi's help. Even for the restroom, Lexi has to be her support and walk her to and from the bathroom door. I was so terrified she was coming to check in on us and I kept sitting up to see. Lexi continually told me to lie down. I told her my fear and she simply told me to shut up and relax before I got myself in trouble. Trouble? We would get in trouble if we were caught. I lied back down, but soon enough she heard a sound and shot up expecting to see her mother at the doorway. There was nothing there. When I felt a sharp pain jolt into my system as she'd gone down, sucked my balls to her molars and bit down. It racked my brain and I wasn't ready for it at all, nor did it feel good. I think she had just took it so much further than what my limits were at the time. I was really nervous about having her down there, of course, and made sure that on, on the occasions where things got so heated that I would lie back and not move. As time went on, she became a lot more attached to me, always following me around and texting me and wanting to see me after school as much as she could. She started asking about my friends, who were all women, but she didn't seem bothered. Fast forward to watching LOTR at her house, and I told her about a funny story with my friends. I told I was just up talking about the girls and I had said and Brooke being the pretty girl meaning she was not a tomboy like the majority of my friends I felt Lexi's knee rocket into my balls before I could even finish my thought this started a downhill slope of her becoming a monster she started using my balls against me in private if she couldn't get a shot and she would simply wrestle with me or hits elsewhere until an opening appeared she would get her hands down my pants and grab a hold of them and squeeze hard, ask for oral or other sexual acts. Most of the time she wanted to perform, but she could keep a firm but painless girl on my spuds. Now I wasn't afraid of her in general. She was still mostly the sweet girl I loved, but this darker side of her in private was driving a stake between us. I would have never used force or laid a hand on her though. I was raised better than that, and I knew I could seriously hurt her if I ever used brute force on her. My breaking point was actually due to my friends. We were all having a good time at the school football game and I was starting getting texts. Who are those sluts? Why are you so close to that bitch in the purple? Why does that whore on the left keep smiling at you? I couldn't see her anywhere. Actually, I'm pretty sure she wasn't there because I had invited her to go but her mom needed her at home. I still don't know where she was. She had images of me with the girls, though because she was sending them to me. I told her that they were all my friends, not sluts. Don't call them sluts. Whatever. I need to talk to you at my house after school Monday. I took my opportunity. I told her I wanted to end things, and I was not happy when she was smothering me. I knew that was coming, she responded. I hope you fucking die. Not hope. I wish you die. I actually want to watch. I want to be the one to kill you. She continued to send me death threats all weekend asking me stuff like what I would like to be buried in, if I would rather be stabbed or beaten, if I thought her mom's truck would be enough to kill me, and sometimes she would just send me, die, 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 and my little flip phone would load five or more pages of it at a time. Come Monday, she started attacking me in the halls, grabbing my throat and choking me, stabbing her nails into my neck or cutting me with pencils, pens deep enough to bleed. I just toughened it out until later that week. I was talking to the girl I mentioned earlier, Brooke, when I suddenly fell asleep. I woke up in the nurse's office, but I wasn't in any pain. 
Apparently, Lexi had ran down the halls and kicked me full force in the balls, and I was out before my feet left the ground. When I touched the ground again, I crumbled like a doll. Brooke had helped me to the office with some help from a guy friend of mine who was nearby. Lexi ran away, but a teacher called her over. She yelled, fuck you, and kept going. She was expelled for a week, and my mother finally learned what was happening, and she put a bounty out on Lexi. No one took it, but she advertised $100 for anyone who would cause physical damage to Lexi. After a week, me and Brooke began dating, and all hell broke loose. Lexi has gone nuts. She kept attacking me more frequently, and I tried to stay near authority figures. After school one day, I was walking Brooke out to my mom's truck and Lexi came running down the hall. I know I said I don't hit women, but I didn't want any harm to Brooke. I intercepted Lexi with a shoulder lead tackle and pinned her to the wall so Brooke could run. Lexi scratched and kneed me until she slipped three. Then Brooke jumped on her and started flailing and landing some hard hits on Lexi's face. The vice principal intercepted it and expelled Brooke and Lexi for one week. Brooke got into my mom's truck and, and we told her about what had happened. My mom was pretty pissed, but she was happy Brooke actually used force on the girl and gave her the $100 she was keeping in her purse. After that, my mom campaigned for Lexi to be kept out of our public schools. The school couldn't do that, but what they could do was put her in a special ed classes that were adjacent to the schools. She would stay in the special education until she graduated junior high and high school so her and I would never be in the same building together. She eventually got worn down with being in alternate education and having a target painted on her back. She moved off to live with her father and now has a home of his own and treated her better than her mom. I haven't seen this girl since and I'm thankful for that. It was August. The first day of my first year of high school. I really hated primary school. I was bullied a lot and I had few friends. In my class were completely new people I had never met, other than one of my friends, Kate. We were close, but we never had attraction for each other, which is apparently rare for a boy-girl friendship. I was shy at first, but I had managed to make new friends once I began participating in clubs such as football and music. I favored music as I could play a wide range of instruments such as guitar, piano, drums, violin, and even singing. There was always a girl in the music club. I'll refer to her as Miku. I'll keep her identity hidden since I don't want to find out what happened if she ever found out about this. Miku was always at the club, but she never spoke. Whenever anyone spoke to her, which seemed rare, she only nodded or shook her head. She always seemed to be at the back of class playing a keyboard. One day at the club, I decided to practice the piano. I noticed Miku happened to be staring at me. Other people were looking, but she seemed to be staring into my eyes. The weirdest thing about it, the thing which creeped me out the most, she seemed to have no emotion, inside or out. After a few years of school, I was now in year 11. I kept my routine of visiting the music club, but I dropped football the year before. I had become popular amongst females and many gained crushes on me. I managed to get a girlfriend. I had asked out a girl from my English class and she accepted my confession. Amy began coming along to my music club with me. She even tried out several instruments. I also noticed that the time Miku always gave me a sorrowful glances as if she were to break down and cry at any minute. After the club one day. The teacher who ran the club asked me to perform in front of an audience for the start of a play which was being planned by the drama club which I accepted. To my surprise, she had asked Miku to perform the singing part. The part which surprised me even more is she glanced to me with a hopeful gaze before I turning back and quickly nodding. A week later we performed. It was my time hearing Miku's voice and it sounded beautiful. After our part was over, we were sent backstage until the end of the play. Miku planned on leaving early. Before leaving, she said to me, You're really great at piano. Amy is so lucky. She left after that, but I noticed how sad she seemed with a slight tone of hatred when she spoke in Amy's name. The next day of school, Amy pulled me aside at break time and told me she wanted to break up. When I asked her for a reason, all she said was, It's what's best. One day you will might understand, but I really hope you won't. She then left before I could question her anymore. I was unable to chase after her because of the mob of people. She even quit the music club and asked our English teacher if she could move a seat far away from me. 
I went into depression since Amy was my first girlfriend. I couldn't even concentrate on my guitar practice. That's when Miku approached me. She told me how I looked sad and I seemed to be slipping up on my chords. I explained what happened although she didn't seem surprised or even pitiful. If anything, I'm sure I remember a small smile on her face. That's when Miku asked me out. I told her I needed time to get over my breakup and she said she understood. After school, I met with Kate at the gate. We began walking home together, but I felt uneasy. She tried to comfort me on the situation, but I didn't feel much better. After a week, Kate met with me at lunch. She seemed like she had been crying, and she was tightly holding onto her wrist. I don't think we should be friends anymore, she said. She was about to say something else when Miku approached us. Kate seemed to freeze up at Miku's presence. Kate left while Miku put up a smile on her face before asking me out again. I felt I lost everything at that moment, so I accepted her second confession and we began dating. I never found any real affection towards her, although she made me happy, and I admit I found her cute at the point. One night, I was at her house. Her mother seemed kind, but she left a few minutes before I arrived for a date. Miku and I were having a normal conversation before she asked a strange question. Do you have a crush on anyone? I was confused by her question and denied. Liar, she claimed. I had feelings for another girl named Sarah. I had helped Sarah in chemistry since she was my partner and my guy's friends had teased me about having a girl partner for a subject such as chemistry. They always joked about shipping us and we made a cute couple, but I didn't think of her anything more than a friend. I denied Miku's claim again and I asked her why she was so concerned. She claimed it was nothing and we reverted back to the normal conversation. The next day, Sarah didn't show up in chemistry. After that, Miku sent me a text requesting me to meet up with her in the gym. I did as she requested and the sight horrified me. Miku was holding her arm around Sarah's neck in a choking manner while holding a penknife in her free hand. Unsure of what else to do, I tried to stop her. Miku, let Sarah go, now, I warned. Miku innocently laughed as she thought I was joking. She let go of Sarah once she realized my serious face. She ran out of the gym as fast as she could. Miku dropped the knife and hugged me. She then picked up the knife and then put it to her breast pocket after folding the blade into the plastic part. Of course, I dared not to tell a teacher since I had no evidence other than Sarah as a witness, but I didn't want to get her involved. I continued my fake love for Miku in fear she'd hurt another girl or put the blame on Amy or Kate for stealing me from her. Once I got into year 16, I was legally allowed to drop out of school, and I did so. I didn't tell Miku, and she didn't know where I lived. Luckily, I moved to a different town after where Miku wouldn't find me. To this day, I still worry about the well-being of Kate, Amy, and Sarah. I hope nothing happened to them after I left. I was 16 at the time, still in school. I had the biggest crush on a girl in my class and thought she was beautiful, kind, and smart. Of course, I didn't have enough courage to ask her out since she had boys swooning over her at the time. She rejected each one. So I was surprised when one day, she sat behind me at lunch. She asked me to the nearby beach with her as a date, which I couldn't refuse. It was a dream come true when I finally made our relationship official, or so I thought. She didn't like me hanging around with my best friend, who was a boy, since he was homosexual and she thought he had a crush on me. I assured her many times that we're only friends and I only loved her. I didn't even like boys. He stopped coming to school after the week off. At first, I thought he left for a part-time job, but I got suspicious when he didn't answer my texts or phone calls. I went to his house after school one day. It was unsettling to find it behind barriers of police tape. There was a police car and two men in uniform standing outside. I questioned them what was going on, which stated as a private matter. I demanded an answer, but they wouldn't tell me. Despite their warning, I stubbornly waited until another two men in uniform dragged a red-haired girl outside by her arms. My eyes widened. She struggled and screamed before looking up in means of escape. When her eyes met mine, her once bright eyes that I had fallen for had turned dull as they began to water. She dropped her head in shame, avoiding my stare. One man pushed me aside while the others pushed her into the car. I'll come back, so don't run off with a slut or she'll die too, she spoke quietly, as if only I could hear. Before I could respond, the car door was slammed. The car sped away. 
Moments before an ambulance came around the corner, two medics ran into the house. I remained in the same spot, refusing to move. I wish I had moved. Laying on a board, pale face, dead eyes, the blood escaped from multiple wounds as my best friend's chest. He died and all I could do was watch as he lost his life. He lost his life because of her. If she comes back for me, I'll kill her myself. When I was 15, I wished so badly for a boyfriend. I never had one before while all my friends seemed to have dates all the time. I couldn't gain a crush on anyone since most of the boys in my year bullied me because I was too shy. They said I was a waste because I was good looking but too shy to do anything about it. They always accused me of having a heart on my sleeve. One day, after chemistry class, a tall blonde boy approached me. I'll refer to him as Matt throughout this. He asked me to date him, which left me speechless and slightly flustered. I'll give you time to think about it, he said as he smiled, writing on a piece of paper. Once he had finished, he handed me the paper. That's my number. Text me your answer, cutie. He winked as he spoke the nickname. Matt left the room, leaving me to think of a reason why he would ask me out. That night, I texted him with a simple yes and smiled to myself. He quietly replied with, great, let's go on a date tomorrow. I simply replied with, sure, and decided to fall asleep. I regret saying yes. Matt and I dated for six months. Around that time, a new boy joined the school. I had never felt real affection for Matt, although I was thankful for him boosting my confidence and asking me out. I soon did gain a crush on the new boy, and to my surprise, he began to hang out with me. One night, I went to Matt's house to break up with him gently. I told him now that I've gained affections for another boy that we should just be friends. Of course, I expect Matt to be upset. But I was surprised when he reached for a pair of scissors from his desk and stabbed them into my hip. The pain was unbearable, as the crimson liquid soaked my shirt. He cut my hair short and removed my shirt. He kept the hair strands together using a clip before placing it in a bag. He smelled my blood-soaked shirt before also placing that in my bag. I'll kill the boy and then leave. But if you don't die, I'll be back. He announced with a smile. I never realized how lifeless his smile was. He ran out of the house while I laid down on the floor with my eyes closed, hoping death would come as so the pain will be over. I woke up in a hospital. There was one card on the desk beside me. I picked up to read the contents. Get better. I'll see you soon, cutie. It read. It was surrounded by hearts. I dropped the card and tried to calm myself down. To this day, I don't know where Matt is. I just hope my husband is okay. I haven't seen him in a few days.